not just a pattern. Okay? If you just say, and it's not the case for this one, but if you just say, oh, add two, or add 10, or multiply by five, or that's not a rule, okay? But it sounds like a rule, it sounds like you're telling me a rule for coming up with the next term, okay? But the rule we're looking for is a rule defined any term, arbitrarily chosen, doesn't matter, 150,000th term in the sequence, I can find it if I use the rule of the formula, okay? So when you see rule, you can think formula. Just the pattern. And in this case, it would be hard to figure out what the pattern was anyway. It doesn't really seem like we're adding anything consistent or multiplying by anything consistent, so to find the pattern would be kind of tricky. Okay? So, the rule is something, and we all, it's always call base of n, something over here that has an n in it, and that n is replaced by this n, and this n is just the like the position in the, the sequence that you want to find. The term is in that position. Okay. I'm going to be able to use it to find a sub 156. Or whatever I want. Without having to follow a pattern all the way down the line to 156. Okay. I think it's important that you realize that this is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. These are all n's. These are all values of n that I need to be able to use this formula for. It's just, this is the, kind of the tricky thing. There's not any way for me to say for any pattern or any sequence whatsoever, here is the shortcut for finding the rule. That's not the case. That's hardly ever the case, actually. If we just choose a, a random person and they come up with a random sequence with a, a rule that they decide, probably it's going to need some kind of a little formula. Okay. So, sit look at it. Let me think. How can I turn one into one? That's kind of a bad question because really the one thing we want to know is how to turn one into one in the same way that I can turn two into eight, in the same way that I can turn three into 27, and four into 64, and five into 125. Sometimes it's helpful to see what n is and what needs to come out of our formula. Raise it to the third. Let's see. Raise it to the third. To the third. The third. The third. The third. Now, remember, all of these things are n's. Right? This is n. N. N is three. N is four. N is five. So, what does our formula look like? Look like n to the third. summation notation, which hopefully you learned from last time, does not mean find what this adds up to, but write it in sigma notation, or summation notation meaning using sigma. So we got one main part is that we use the letter sigma. What does the letter sigma mean? The sum. It's the sum of uh, several things. All right, so now we have to know how to find those several things. So there's three more things left. Three more components to sigma notation or summation notation. You tell me, what are we gonna, what do you know? What do you know about what goes into the summation notation? What's that? It's gonna be a four on top. Because so this is n, okay. I equals one. I equals one in the bottom here. Okay, so why is this one and why is this four? You start at the first term. The first term, a sub one, is Two, three, four. We add up until the fourth term. Okay. Do we have to? Do we have to say we're starting at the first term and ending at the fourth term? It's probably the easiest thing to do, but I just want to show you. All right. No. Not over it yet. 
Well, we could do this, which would be a, a, a weird choice, but we could start at a sub 7, call this a sub 8, a sub 9, a sub 10. So then our sigma notation would look different. It would look like what? Sub i. What's up? What's on top? So four. Or oh, no, four. Ten. Four? four? Ten. No, not four. Ten. 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 Yeah. Which term do we stop on? That's what goes there. Oh. Not uh, just how many, but what do we stop on? The tenth one. And this is what? So seven. Seven. So we start the seventh one at the end of the tenth one. That's what this means. Start the first one, end of the fourth one. Start the seventh one, and end of the tenth one. The difference between these two is the the next and last part, the rule look different. Because still, even when we plug in 7 to the rule, we still need to wind up with 5. All right? So, just making a point. We could do this. We wouldn't do this because it's up to us. And you know what the easiest thing would be? Start at 1. Makes the most sense. Okay. So we're going to start at 1. What's our rule going to be so that we get 5, 12, 19, and 26? Five, seven, seven. Okay, well, that's a pattern. That's not a rule. 7 n. Minus 2. So negative 2 plus 7n? Yeah. I like that. You can just stare at it for a while. You can come up with that because it makes sense. If you tried it and it works, it produces all of those terms. Okay. Or if you notice that you're adding the same thing every time, what's that kind of a sequence called? Arithmetic, arithmetic. I will always say arithmetic, but it's up to you. You gotta make your own decisions. It's gonna be you. So it's an arithmetic sequence or series because we're adding them together, um, and so that means we're adding the same thing. So you could always a little less formulaic, but um, so we're adding seven. Okay, so we'll just be adding on multiples of seven, right? Plus seven, plus fourteen, plus twenty-one, plus twenty-eight, plus thirty-five. Add multiple of seven every time. N goes up by one, we add another seven. Okay. And then we just want to make sure that we start with a number that when we put one in here, meaning we add seven to this number, we get five. So what number would that be? It would be negative two. Negative two plus seven will be five. Negative two plus two times seven, 13, will be 12. Negative two plus three times seven, it'll be 19, and so on. Or, very formulaic, for arithmetic sequences, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times e. You can do that. But if you plug all the stuff in there, you distribute p and you combine that term, so wind up with negative 2 plus 7 n. There it is. Leave the, the circles or don't. You can erase the circles and uh, clean it up, and that will be it. That will be summation notation for that series. Questions, did I go through that too fast? Did I go through it too slow? Did I go through it too confusingly? Did I have too high pitched of a voice? <laughs> Anything. Find the sum. How many things will we be adding up? Five. five things. One, two, three, four, five things. One, two, three, four, five things. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five. Adding <coughs> them up. How do I know I'm adding them up? Find the sum. Find the sum. It's the sum, the sigma notation, summation notation. The letter sigma means adding everything up. So I know I'm going to add five things up. That's what this tells me. Add. One, two, three, four, five things. How do I get those things? Here, come up with more. 
Can I put them? Using oh, the this little formula. formula right here. First one, we plug in 1, right? That's a sub 1. We plug in 1 there. 3 times 1 squared is 3. 3. The next? 2 squared. 12 times 3. 27. 27. Yeah. Yeah? 3 squared times 3. 4 three, squared, 16 48. times 3, 48. 5 squared, 25 times 3. 75. 165. Riley, you have a question, please. Well, no, I understand it now. I was just thinking about what I said. <laughs> your time to try it out and make sure that you get it. And then try it again a few days later. It's what I try to get you to do, right? I get you to do your homework and then I quiz you and then we go over it and then we do it again and then we go over it again and we might go over it again and again and again. So we hopefully try to get it out. But don't rely on what we do between the times of 9.55 and 11.25 to be the sum total of your knowledge. Okay? It's really rare that you can just show up to class and be fine. Alright. So we found the sum. We did a great job. with all the smart boards we have in this class or the, or the, in the school, anybody would still try and wipe something off of their finger. I mean, people aren't using their smart boards with their fingers. Is that true? The teachers, like, don't want to do that. No. Oh, I, don't know. I am. Okay, what are you showing us there, Dakota? Uh, that's his sub four. Yeah. And, uh, that's his. And what are those little uh, curves? <laughs> that, 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 that. To show how we get there. Uh, Wait, how do you know it's three? Guess and check, Dakota. Are you saying that you did seven plus five and tried that a bunch of times to get to twenty-five? Well, I got it the first time. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So we're going to establish. We know we're going to add something the same every time to get from a sub four to a sub five, and from a sub five to a sub six, and all the way to a sub ten. Three works. Okay, come on. Okay.
Yeah, it's a plus, but then you put a negative up here. You should be taking some classes before you pick up some, uh, yeah, some courses at the university. Me? sequence written out here, right? And you know that you're adding three. Earlier you came up with the rule pretty quickly when it was an arithmetic sequence, right? Back here. Uh, here, right? Yeah. You said, oh, plus seven add, and then you had negative two. Oh, yeah. It's the same idea. So you could just look at the sequence as well and say, oh, I'm going to add three multiples of three, and then I'll have to back up yeah. to that negative will throw me off. To negative five. You got there, you got there. Nobody had to tell you what to do. You got it. Um, okay, Dakota. What if A sub 7 equals 14? <coughs>
Case uh, 54 <laughs> is 578. And I'll tell you, it's arithmetic. Okay, just like the one that we just did. I'm going to break you out of habit. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do habit, being, guessing, checking. That's good. You know what you're looking for. You're looking for the number that you're supposed to add, but just guessing. A sub 7 is 14, A sub 54 is 578. We want to write the rule. A sub 7, and I add, 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 and I got to A sub 54. A sub 7 is 14. A sub 54 is 578. So should I guess what this is? Guess 3, and try to add that, I don't know, 40 some times? I don't like that. No. So I shouldn't guess. There's a way at this. Start at 14. We're going to add stuff. Yeah? What are we going to add? Oh, okay. Something, right? How many times are we going to add this something? <laughs> 47 times? How did you know you're going to add it 47 times? 54 minus 7 gives us 47. Or 50, 54 minus, yeah, 54 minus 7. It tells us we're going to add whatever this thing is 47 times. Now, we don't know what this thing is, but we do know that 47 times that number, plus 14, will get us to what? Equals 8, uh, 578. Yeah. And then you uh, subtract 14. Yeah. And then divide by 47. There you go. Wait a minute. 578 minus 14. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Uh, I don't know. 568. Okay. We divide by 47. Four? Twelve. Twelve. Close. <laughs> so now D is twelve. Now you gotta look at into the whole rule. Into the rule? Okay, well, so you gotta find A sub one. Well we can we can do this. I think this is what I thought you were saying. We can use the formula. Right? The formula looks like this. Agreed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't know this, right? Yeah. But do we know this? Do we know this? Yeah. What is that? A sub n. A sub n. Do we have an a sub n, an example of an a sub n? What's that? Seven. 14. No, I mean seven. No, I mean seven. For n is 7, a sub 7 is 14, right? A sub 7 is 14. We don't know a sub 1. But n, what's n? <coughs> Seven. D is twelve. A sub, or fourteen equals a sub one plus twelve times seven is four. Four. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Twelve. Seven times twelve. So that's seventy-four. Eight times twelve. What does it matter? Seventy-two. Or six times twelve. Sorry. What's that? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Track no. 14. No. Uh, track 72. Track 72. 14 minus 72. A sub 1. Which is what? Negative 58. Negative 58. Now we know A sub 1. Now we know D. So, Grigley, 
together, a sub n equals negative 58 <coughs> plus n minus 1 times 12. Distribute the 12 to my terms. Did I show you that so that you would memorize how to do that problem exactly? Uh, do you think I, I didn't use any memorized steps, right? I pieced it together knowing what I know about arithmetic sequences. Everything I did was based on a knowledge of what an arithmetic sequence is. I know that I add something. So all I did was write down a sub 7, a sub 54. We're going to add that number 47 times to get from 14 to 578. We're going to start there, add that number 47 times, and get 578. And you have an algebraic equation to solve B. There you go. Yep. And while we're here, we create another algebraic equation. We know that a sub 7 is 14. We plug in 7, we plug in 14, we plug in 12 that we now know. We solve for a sub 1. Now we have both pieces of in. Negative 58. Well, we subtract 72 from both sides. Plus or minus 72. Negative 58. Um, I don't trust James. After this, go. Just the same. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. On some of the arithmetic series. It's arithmetic. It's important that it's arithmetic, or it's useful that it's been arithmetic, I guess. Because if we don't take advantage of the fact that it's arithmetic, we could just find the sum of all how many of these numbers? Twelve. Twelve of them. We could write them all out. Plug in one, plug in two, plug in three, plug in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Find all those numbers, add them all together. Or, there's a formula for adding up all of the whatever numbers we want of an arithmetic sequence. It is this. S sub n equals uh, n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. Plug in the numbers that we know, yes. Okay, so S sub what? 12. 12. It's all the first 12 terms, yeah? Equals 12. And it's 12. We just said that. So A sub 1? Uh, 3. Nine. 1. 9. 9. 3 plus nine. 6 times 1. We put 1 in there. We get 9. Plus A sub N. N is 12. A sub 12. Plug in 12. 12 times 6. Two is three, five, 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 two. Great. Two cancels with 12. We get six times nine plus 75 is 84. Six times 84. Any questions about any of that? No, okay. Feel equipped. Ready yeah. to go. You can do it. Yeah. Should take a quiz. We do have a quiz today. Oh, I like that. Sixteen questions. So questions are like fine fifteen. Pretty basic. Okay. Um, 
got another piece of paper? We'll go over 12.3. Find a term, you're going to be taking a term and multiplying it by something. Okay? So if we look at those formulas on the right, first of all, should we choose a formula that has S in it or A? Okay. Why not S? That's the sum. Okay, so that narrows it down. We're going to use one of these. All right? Geometric sequences are where we take terms and multiply them. So Given the choice between these two, the only two that we have as far as formulas go for that, which one do you choose? The second one. The second one? No, like the middle this, one. Oh, the second middle one, one the three. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because it's multiplying. Because it's multiplication. Right? And maybe if I know, I mean, that's the best reason why. I mean, if I just, just by process of elimination, I know geometric sequences use multiplication, not addition. So I choose the one that is multiplied. Also, um, we have like letters that we use. This is not the best way to uh, learn, but we do have letters involved in uh, arithmetic sequences. We have the letter D. D for what? Difference. Difference. In geometric sequences, we have R. R for what? Why ratio? Okay, why difference? Why is it difference for an arithmetic sequence? Mm -hmm. So how in this arithmetic sequence, like, I already use the word difference for the thing that I add to get from one term to the next. Difference means subtraction, right? So what would I subtract to find the common difference, the number that I add to get from the one number to the next? What, two numbers? Any two numbers, like this number and that number? Right next to each other. Okay, take this number minus that number. This number minus that number. That. Yeah. yeah, if I take this number minus this number, I will get, uh, oh, that's not an arithmetic sequence. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, for an arithmetic sequence, such as uh, 3, 9, 15, 21. That's arithmetic, right? What's the common difference? Six. The thing that we add is six. Fifteen minus nine is six. Twenty-one minus fifteen is six. Nine minus three is six. If we take a number minus the number before it, we come up with a number that we would add. Makes sense. So uh, we used to call those uh, like fact families or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. That's what we called them when I was in school. And stuff changes all the time, so you probably didn't call it that. Okay. Fact family. 9 plus 6 is 15, 15 minus 9 is 6. So anyway, that's the common difference. What about for a uh, geometric sequence? 
How am I going to find the number that I multiply 6 by to get 18? Divided by 6. When we divide, that's a ratio. The ratio between a number and the number before it is r, the common ratio. Okay, so let's use that and this. Find the rule for this geometric sequence. And the rule is given by so what's a sub one? Those right there. What's R? Question look familiar? We're given two terms of a sequence, kind of like you know two two terms that are not right next to each other, and then we're supposed to figure out what's the formula, what's the rule. We get this from an arithmetic sequence earlier, right? So borrowing on that idea and knowing that we're a geometric sequence now, not an arithmetic one. Go. Now we're going to figure out, first of all, what R is, what number we're multiplying by. Three by guessing. No. How'd you find three? Great. That's a, I mean, once you realize something, Write it down, whether it be an equation or a picture or something. You have more now, now that you realize you go three numbers to get to seven, more now than you did before. And you should write that down. A sub four, go to a sub five, a sub six, a sub seven, right? We're gonna go three times to get to a sub seven. We start at 162 and wind up at 4,374. Now how are we getting from one number to the next, one term to the next? Multiplying. We don't know what we're multiplying by, right? We're multiplying by, we call that thing r. Multiply by r, then I'll take that number and multiply, you know, when I multiply by r, then I'll multiply that by r, and then I'll multiply that by r. Okay? Let's try and take this and put it into an equation. Let's equate two things. If I take 162 and multiply it by what? By what? You don't have to tell me a specific number. R. R. Just one R? Three. Three R's. How do I multiply by three R's? How do I shorten that up? R raised to the third. R raised to the three. Equals. What will that give me when I multiply by R to the third? 4,374. 4,374. <coughs> Solve for R. We've made a true statement about R, and now if we could use this, the, uh, the or algebra powers, we get R by itself, and we'll know what that number is. What do we do first? Divide by 162. Now subtract 162, not add 162, but divide by 162 because we're canceling out that multiplication. We get r to the third equals, I think it's 27. And then? Cube root. Figure out what number multiplies by itself three times to get 27. That number is three. Plus or minus three? No. Plus or minus three? No. No, why not? It's not an even root, only for even roots. Why? Because if we do multiply a negative number by itself, even number of times, we can get a positive number. You will get a positive number. But if you multiply a number by itself three times and you get a positive number, you can only do that with a positive number. If you do a negative number, you wind up with a negative number. So R is three. 
we know that r is 3, how are you going to figure out what a sub 1 is? So we're going to go the other way. We're going to go from a sub 4 down to a sub 3. Well, that would mean that I would divide by 3. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And that will give you down to a sub 1. If you like equations, as I do, I could just say this. a sub 1 is 3 away from a sub 4, just like a sub 4 is 3 away from a sub 7. So if I start at a sub 1, and I multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, 3 times, I will get 162. And now we solve for a sub 1. Well, 3 to the third is just 27. Divide by 27. 6. Now we have all the pieces we need, all two of those pieces that we need. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And it just so happens it's the same. We can write out all, how many terms are we going to add up? Eight. eight. We could write them all out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them by plugging in I is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or, because it's a geometric sequence, which is really handy, we have a nice little formula just for that. What are we finding? S sub 8 equals, what's A sub 1? 6. 6. Right. This looks exactly like this formula. A sub 1 times R to the n minus 1. A sub 1 times R to the n minus 1, except for n is i instead of n. It's, but it's fine. It's just a variable. So a sub 1 is 6 times 1 minus r, four. wait, what's r? 4. It's 4 to the 8, to the eight because that's what we're doing. Eight. Over 1 minus r is 4 again. We get negative 3, that cancels with 6. Let's call it 1 and negative 2, divide 6 by negative 3. So we get negative 2 times 1 minus, what's 4 to the 8? Negative two times negative six thousand five hundred and fifty sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five. So it's a positive one hundred So that's really convenient, the instructions to give that piece away. And when you look at it, this looks exactly like the formula for finding a, a, the rule for the geometric sequence, right? So all the pieces are right there, a sub 1 and r. If you weren't sure, you could just write out each term and have all 8. Or if you start writing them out, you get 6. Okay, and then you plug in 2, you get 6 times 4, that's the next one, it is 24. And then you do it again, you, go, you put in uh, 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 squared is 16 times 6. Right? What's 16 times 6? 96. Okay. Maybe you, like, you realize, like, oh wait, it's geometric, it means I'm multiplying by something every time, so all I have to do is figure out what am I multiplying by the one over the next. So I'm multiplying by 4. That might be a 
certainly will <laughs> save you some time if you recognize the geometric series that you're adding up. And you want to um, yeah, save some time. Okay, any more questions, good question? Any more questions from the homework? I like the uh, I like the packets, and I think though I, I really prefer.